Well, things have become extremely complicated. At one level, you could say the Shia militias, the Iranian-backed Shia militias, are the strongest force. At another level, Iran benefits from the rise of the Islamic State because it has been able to extend its power through Iraq and also into Syria. It's the fear that the government in Baghdad is an Iranian-backed sectarian regime that led Sunnis to decide that maybe Islamic State is the lesser of two evils when compared with Maliki's regime. But you're not suggesting, are you, that the Iranians in some sort of amazingly Machiavellian conspiracy have actually fomented and backed the rise of Islamic State? No, I'm not suggesting that, but they can benefit from it. At the end of the day, for the Islamic State to be really destroyed, it requires the Sunnis in Iraq to turn against the Islamic State and defeat it. And they're only going to turn against the Islamic State when they see it can't win, when there are better alternatives, and when they're supported by the government of Iraq and the US. And so at the moment, we're not seeing that level of support to win over the Sunnis. You, uh, I want to bring this back to personal thoughts toward the end of uh, our interview, because you've been on an amazing personal journey. You know, you work for the British Council, you were a sort of cult cultural ambassador to the Middle East in a way, and then you found yourself through chance as much as anything, deeply involved in a military occupation. And since then, you've been watching it from the United States. Today, do you believe that there is still merit in the United States using its military power to try and shape events in the Middle East? I think the main problem that America has is having a strategy for what it does. Military means shouldn't be an end in itself. It should be, if you're going to use it, it's how do you bring about a political solution? And I think what's happened too often, people have just become fixated on the military aspect, killing bad guys, rather than what comes next? What comes after the Islamic State? How to have a better future for the region? When you speak to young people in Iraq, they want to live in a country that looks like Dubai, not like Daesh, not like Islamic State. And so it's understanding that people throughout the Middle East, like the rest of the world, want to lead normal lives.